Hey there, uh, thank you for checking out this tutorial. Uh, this will show you quickly how to take files and transfer them to a web server using FTP. Uh, one of the free FTP clients that I recommend and like to use is FileZilla. You can find it and you can download it at filezilla-project.org and uh, once you've downloaded it and you install it. It's pretty straightforward and easy to use. Um, I already have it started and running on my computer and I'm going to uh, bring it up. So here uh, what I'm showing you uh, currently is um, my FileZilla application and what I do is I set up sites um, in the tool so that it stores and remembers uh, different servers that I want to connect to over time. Um, up here at the top, you'll see there's the ability to do a quick connect. Uh, if you have like a one-time connection, you want to transfer a file quickly, uh, go ahead and you can use the quick connect. But I personally like to use the sites that I'll show you in a second. Down on the left, this is um, where files on your local computers are. Um, here I'm in a folder for web development and um, I have a file in there or a folder in there called tutorial one hello world. My goal is to transfer that up to my web server which is over on the right here which is the remote site. Um, I'm already connected there and I have a couple different tabs open uh, for connections there but I'm gonna just close those down real quick uh, so you guys can ignore those um, and you'll see the status is up here that I've disconnected from from those servers uh, and all. Uh, but once you are connected over here on the right, this is going to show you your directories you have access to to the server you're connected on. But let's go ahead and let's set up a new connection. And what I'm going to do is go to File, Site Manager. Okay, and I don't currently have any sites for this tutorial. I cleaned them out. So I'm just going to do a new site. And you should have been given some information to connect to, or you could have went to your hosting account and uh, set it up. Um, and I'm going to give this new site a name first of all. I'm just going to call it um, Dr. Todd uh, Tutorial. Okay, and then I have my information here. I keep stuff in Notepad++ all the time, and I'll bring that over. And you can see here I have a username, um, this password, uh, it's actually incorrect. So uh, you guys can't try to use my information and actually get connected. Um, the server I'm going to connect to, the port, uh, and then the URL that files are going to go to once I've transferred them. So we're going to check all of that out. We're going to go ahead and set this uh, site up. So my, my host name here, okay, that's going to be my FTP server and I'm going to go with pasting that in. Uh, it's port 21 for the case of uh, what I'm going to be setting up here. Uh, that's because um, this is just using a standard FTP connection. And then I'm going to put in my username and password. Uh, so my username I was given is the following uh, Dr. Todd FTP user um, at my host name which is professorwolf.com. And then I'm going to put my password in. Okay. And if all goes well, I will establish a connection and uh, I will hit connect. Okay. And it's already going to tell me I have a connection already um, because I didn't close out the one that I was showing you uh, down there in the, the right hand side. So what I'll do is abort the previous and connect in the current tab and um, hit OK. Now you can set that as your default option um, or I could have created a new tab so you can have multiple um, FTP connections open at any time like I did when, when we first uh, started this tutorial if you chose to. But I'll hit OK. Um, so you won't get that error message if, or get that pop-up if it's your first uh, attempt. If all goes good, if you read the statuses, um, you'll see another disconnect. Um, it's going to resolve my address, um, show you the IP I'm connecting to, what that host name is, uh, the port there at the end, um, the security configuration, indicate it's logged in, and then list the directory that I have access to, which is here. Um, I have no files in that directory currently except for the FTP quota, which my hosting company company uh, just automatically by default throws in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this directory. Now I can move a fault 
a folder in its entirety. I can move an individual file. Um, so in there I have um, a few files, um, but an index page and a PHP page. Uh, but I'm gonna just move the directory and drag it over. And when, it ha when it's done, uh, you'll watch status is down here. And if, depending upon your file sizes, uh, you'll see it quickly update. Um, and down at the bottom, you have queued. So if you got a lot of transfers occurring, things that fail and successful. So you'll see that um, everything that I moved was successful and their file sizes, etc. So now that I've moved my files, well, I have a a URL um, here that I was given that my file should go to. Um, notice that um, it's case um, camel case, or so it's going to be case sensitive because it's Linux hosting. So always note that if you're on Linux hosting, in my case I am, case sensitivity is important. Um, so the same goes with this tutorial one hello world. Um, I've used camel casing, and uh, to pull it up in a browser, I got to be careful that I type that in. Um, to save myself some trouble, um, I've already typed it in here, uh, so I can just hit refresh, and a page should now come up. Okay, and uh, you'll see so. Um, it does. does. Um, so this actually is my index.html page uh, that I loaded, and I can type in index.html if I wanted to. Uh, you might wonder, well, why did it show that one um, over the PHP page? The way my hosting server is set up, um, it's got precedence over files um, with HTML over PHP. Um, if they're named index, it'll automatically serve them up um, as the default file um, if you just go to the path. Uh, so uh, if I have index.html and index.php in that directory like I did, um, index.html loads first because it takes precedence. But if I wanted to see index.php and test it out, and if I um, type it in here, um, actually we'll see another error message. So that tells me just from a troubleshooting perspective, well, something must not be as I expected. Um, I'll go back to FileZilla. I'll check out what I did. Um, so here on the right hand side on the remote site, um, actually I was incorrect. Um, I have a PHP file called test.php. Uh, so again, case sensitivity is important uh, as well as knowing what your file names are. Uh, so I kind of did that intentionally because I wanted you to see uh, you know, a standard type of 404 error message for the web. That means file not found. So if you do test.php here on this directory, there you go. My hello world PHP page comes up. Uh, and to show you another instance of case sensitivity, um, if I change that to a capital T, again, sorry, this page does not exist. So um, case sensitivity on file names, case sensitivity on directories, all of that's important to pay attention to. Uh, those of you who work and program typically in a Windows environment, uh, Windows does not tend to be case sensitive in most cases. Uh, and those of you when you switch over to Linux and other operating systems, case sensitivity is really important. So it's common uh, that you'll try to pull something up after you've loaded it to your um, web server um, and then realize you're not typing things the same way as how you've created them on that um, remote server. So be very cautious about it. Um, and once you, uh, you know, pay close attention, double check what you've uploaded, double check what you're typing in your browser, all things should come up correctly. Um, and you're good to go. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, feel free to uh, put comments uh, down below. I hope you subscribe and uh, stay tuned for uh, future tutorials. Thank you.